And now it's time to change the methods like put and delete. In fact, we also left with uh, post. So we'll start with post first and then we'll move towards other methods. Now you help me what to do here. So first of all, we need to get this DB session so I can just copy it from here. I mean, when I say help, uh, just think about it and I will, I will know your thinking and I will get the answers from you. So here, I will just paste it so that I will get the DB. Now, once I get the DB here, I can use it to add the product. So I will not be using append, I will be using add. But the question arises, how will I add it? Now, if you remember, when we worked with init DB, this is where we were adding data in the database, right? So you can just copy this and paste it here. And let's see, if, do we have to make any changes? Not here, not here, here. So basically we got the product here and that's the product I wanted to add. But here it's basically Pydentic model. I want to convert that into a database model. And that's the thing we are doing here using model dump and uh, unpacking. And it will add, cool. So simple, right? Uh, we can verify this. And to verify this, I will go back to the browser refresh this and first of all let me just try to get all the products to see how many products we have here so execute we got four products one two five and six let's add a new product and i will be using one of it to make the changes or to create a new product and for creating i have to go here and click on try it out replace with this or maybe I will just add it here. So we got five and six. Let me add seven here. We can also make this auto-generated. So instead of typing the ID seven, maybe you can just pick up the last ID and use it. I mean, plus one and, and use it. Uh, name, I will say book. That's what I wanted to enter here. And I will say my daily notes. And the price is, let's say we got $10. And quantity is, let's say we got 100 of quantity of this. And click on execute. This should add the product. And there's no problem. Response body is this. Uh, status code is 200. So that's important. 200 means everything is OK. Let me verify this by going to database. This, I mean, you can verify from the products as well. But let me go to database and run. And OK. Oh, oh, something is not working. You know, what is why things went wrong? Uh, it's because we are actually adding it. It's just that we forgot one step, commit. Okay, so whenever you make changes, you have to say commit. Otherwise, it will not commit. So it's a db dot commit. And now let's reload. Go back there and execute the same thing again. Again, 200 and we can verify from database, run, yup. We got it. So we got a new entry, which is book, my daily notes, and uh, price and quantity. We can also verify this from the get all products. I can just execute this part, and this should print my daily notes as well. Perfect, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so we have done with the get, we have done with the post. Let me just go with the put now. We can make it quick now. Uh, we know a lot of things. So when you want to update a product, because update is taking two things, the ID and the product, which is new information. And you want to update the details now. See, creating it is very easy. You can simply use add because it will create a new record. Updating means you have to fetch the existing record. First of all, you have to check. Do you have existing record of the same ID? If you have, then you have to pick up the values from this product and add it there multiple steps. So what I can do here is, uh, first of all, I don't need all these things. In fact, let me remove all these things and let's make it from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to check if the product exists. And you can use this thing to check if the product, ex product exists. So I can just copy this and paste it here because this will give you the product. But also I need to uh, use this thing. Sometimes it's important to re, uh, reuse the code. So once you got the DB object here, I can use it here, no problem. And once you got this, you can check if DB product, if this exists, I want to do certain things. If not, I can write this in the else part here, else return no product, okay? But in the if block, I want to write certain things. What are the things I want to write? Uh, first of all, we know if it, it is coming to if block, that means the product exists in the database. And if it exists, we want to change it. So if this pro product exists, and if you want to change certain things about it, what you can do is you can say db product dot, and you can change the name of it. Let's say I want to change the name to 
uh, a monitor. Okay, so this is how you can do it. Now you will say just by updating the value will it work? Yes, you just have to do one thing, which is db dot commit, and when you do this, whatever changes you have made to this this object, it will be committed in the database. Okay, but I don't want to set monitor. I want to set the values coming from the product. So name you can do something like this, and we don't even know which values have been changed. So we have to set all the values, not just one. Uh, maybe you want to change the ID as well. But when you change the ID, do you want to keep this option of saving, changing the ID? No, I don't want to change the ID. I will just start with a name because changing ID might create issues if you have a bigger application and they depend upon your IDs. So let's not change it. So I'll say product dot description, then DB product dot price, and this should be from product dot price DB product dot quantity, and this will be from product dot quantity. Okay. Now, once you make all these changes, just say commit. This will be saved in the database. If if is not executing, you can simply print uh, the else block, which is return no object found. In fact, here you can also return after committing product updated. So now let's see if this things works out. So I'll go back here and first of all, let me just fetch. Uh, let me just change uh, seven here, and I want to change this description here. I want to change the price as well. So what I can do is I can go to put, do, 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 I want to I want to go to put and here I want to change this so I want to make the changes to the seven ID uh, ID number let's say try ID number eight and when you try to execute ID eight it just it, it will say no product found but now I will say seven and I want to change ID anyway it doesn't matter whatever you mention will not make an impact I want to change the name I will say notebook description i want to set okay there's a problem with the camel kissing okay uh, so i want to set the description as my daily notes for work and let's say the price is now 9.99 dollars and the quantity is let's say we got 80. so we are making the changes and let's say execute will this work uh, it says product updated but i want to verify that from the database execute this and yes things have been changed here okay Cool. Uh, we can even verify that from the all uh, products. So you can see before running the query, these are the old details. And now if I execute, and those are your new details. Cool. Even put is working. Now let's try with the next one, which is delete. So go back here, delete the product, what we are going to do. So of course, I don't want to use the for loop here. For deleting, we can directly delete the product, but then we need to first fetch the product from the database. So the same thing, we'll be using this query because whenever you have an ID in the parameter, you will be using this. Uh, again, we have to get the connection. So I will just use this, copy and paste here. Okay, well now once you got the object, first you will check if the DB product exists. If this exists, uh, then we'll do certain changes. Else will return product not found so i will say else and block now in this what we are going to do is you will simply say db dot delete and you can pass the db product and that's it this will delete it the only thing you have to do is you have to also say commit at the end otherwise it will, it will not work committing is very important in life also when you are learning fast api complete it uh, so let's go back now to the page and let's try to delete, uh, let's say I want to delete seven itself, or maybe let's delete something in between. Let's say I want to delete this six number. So ID six, so I will go down, down, down here. So come back here, click on try it out. And now if you say seven, click on execute. Okay, I wanted to delete six, one. I don't know why I deleted seven. Uh, it says null because we are not returning anything, but the status code is 200, that's great. So if you go to the PG admin, run, seven gone. In fact, I would also delete two because we wanted to delete something in between. So delete and again, return null, but we got status code 200. Let's verify from database, looks cool. We can even verify that from the all products now. That's a ritual, right? Test it with all products and two gone, okay? So this is how basically you update, delete, 
stuff. Now, I know initially we started with the UI, beautiful UI, and now we are working with Swagger. Don't worry, once I make this thing working, I will try to connect the React with this because there are certain changes which you have to make apart from DB database connections. So we have talked about database and things are looking good. So now it's time to go for the next step. See you in the next part.